Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, today I am here with a review of Dark Venture, an adventure card game for one to four players created by Robert Lemon. And if you guys stick around until the end of the video, I will tell you how you can win a brand new copy of the game and its expansion, kindly provided to the Dungeon Dive by Robert Lemon. And um, I also wanted to mention, some of you have seen my official Dungeon Dive clipboard here. <laughs> um, this logo was actually created by uh, Robert Lemon. He did that for me for uh, doing a, a, a Kickstarter preview. So thank you so much, Robert. I really like that. I have a couple, I've had a couple of people comment on the, on the clipboard. So Dark Venture, I wanted to start off by reading a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the introduction. When looking back, a catastrophe, a catastrophic event like the one that changed our world must have been inevitable. But on that day, it was not expected. The first wave of the cataclysm hit quickly, transforming most living creatures in some way. Many were killed instantly. A short time later, another wave struck, altering all life once again. Our reality has been distorted in ways we could never have imagined. Learned warlocks who studied the cataclysm discovered that our land had been encircled by restrained primordial forces they referred to as arcane magics. In the distant past, these magics had been readily accessible, but a curse later held them at bay, keeping them damned and building for millennia. Somehow, the curse was broken, and it is this, they write, that unleashed the great change upon our land. That's a really cool introduction to the world of this game. And I have to say that it is the world of this game, the theme, the overall feel of this game, that really makes it stand out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at its core, Dark Venture is a it is a competitive card based kind of adventure game an overland crawl and I really do think that the game stands out in a competitive manner much like the game series Dungeoneer which I know I've mentioned many times before and I need to get to the table for a video series on. But that is the closest example of a game that I can think of that feels similar in its mechanisms because this game really does rely on the players to populate the world with its locations, with its characters and items and all of that. Uh, the game itself doesn't really populate itself like a lot of dungeon crawl and adventure games do, especially those that are co-op. Now this does have some solo and co-op rules in it, but I feel that they weren't, they're, they're, they're not, they, the rules as written for co-op make the game very, very slow in revealing a lot of the cool stuff that it has to offer. So I actually came up with some house rules and Robert liked them enough that he kind of adopted them as the official, unofficial Dungeon Dive solo rules. And he actually made this card that you can print and I'll have a link to it on BGG, there's a link. But this is um, a set of rules that I made that I play solo by and I have a lot more fun with this just because it allows the world to be populated with locations and characters at a faster rate and so you're able to have more choices and in my opinion more fun but I do think that it does excel as a competitive game unfortunately I have not played it in a competitive manner but what the game is is you you have kind of a standard character so like my character now that I'm playing with is uh, Crochel the Brave 
and he is of this faction here, which I can't remember the name of that faction. What is that faction? I'll have to find it later. But there are like eight or so different factions, and some of the factions will fight each other or have, you know, different bonuses when they, when facing against each other. But you have various strengths, like you have uh, various stats, like your strength and movement and mind and luck and health, and then uh, the characters are designated kind of between three types. You have heroes, NPCs or enemies, and followers. And then each of the characters has a, a listing of different abilities and items that they have. So if you picked this guy, he would come with the barking stick and a medical pack, and he will, wears leather body armor. He has heroic strikes as a, um, a bonus, and he can heal at a certain place. When you compare that to an enemy, so this is an enemy that you might fight, what's interesting about this game is that the enemies are 100% exactly like the heroes, and you treat them almost exactly the same. So they have the same number of stats, they come equipped with different weapons and armor, and they have different abilities. And so over here, I have set up my like NPC and enemy area where we have the Sarkog wolf that I'm gonna be fighting, the Eggman soldier equipped with his egg armor, and then this guy here, Prince Badget the Frail, who is a follower that I could pick up. And so, as you can quickly see here, the game, even though it comes in a very small box, can actually take up quite a bit of table space. So, the fact that it is a small boxed card-based adventure game kind of hides the fact that it is actually a pretty in-depth um, really like it's, it's an in-depth game that has an epic feel because of the amount of detail that it is offered however that detail can be somewhat of a double-edged sword because every time you you come up you play a new character or you, you, you are introduced to a new follower or an enemy, you do have to take the time to set up all of their stats and going through the item deck and finding their gear. So it can slow the game down a little bit. And that's kind of really what this, this game is a slow paced game. And that's that's okay that's that's just the kind of game it is it's not a quick get in get out and play type game you it's it's more of a ponderous it's more of a it, it kind of moves at a glacial pace but that's part of its charm or that's part of its design i think i don't say that it's a slow game um, as a negative but how the game is played basically is you're going to have these cards or these location cards and this creates the map. Each game, you're gonna start in the crossroads, which is the, uh, the first location. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to pick a location guide and an action guide. Now the game comes with two, we have A and B. So right now I'm playing through the A or the B scenarios. And each location is actually going to have a location uh, paragraph that you read in the location book, and that's gonna tell you a little bit about the location, what is there, what you can do there, and maybe some of the characters that you might meet while you're there. And then some locations will also have, in addition to the blue location guidebook, they will have a green hexagon. And that tells you to go to the actions book which the actions book is again a book filled with paragraphs and this is kind of like a more choose your own adventure type book where you will turn to that location or that action you will read it you will often be faced with a choice that you can make which will require you to read further none of the reading is extensive you're not going to be spending you know dozens of minutes in each book just a few minutes to a few seconds in each book looking at it and telling you and it, it, it's, it's almost like you're reading like a travel guide of this world that you are creating and i really like that i like it's a perfect amount of pre-scripted narrative and narrative choices mixed in with player choice and how the world gets populated 
because all of the locations, all of the characters, they're going to be played out of your hand. And at the beginning of the game, you're going to start with a certain number of locations, characters, and items in your hand. And you can play those on your, for the land, you can play them, the locations, to build the map and move around. You can place characters on the map, and sometimes you might want to place enemies. Sometimes you can place enemies in such a way that they will fight each other. Sometimes you will place enemies in a way like this is what I mean about it being a competitive game that you want to block off your opponents from being able to reach certain locations because they might need to get a certain location to complete one of their quests. And so you might want to strategically place enemies out on the board for various reasons. And that's really cool. They, there aren't very many adventure and dungeon crawl style games in which the players are playing the enemies out on the board. And that's kind of why I compare it to Dungeoneer, because Dungeoneer had a very similar uh, mechanism, and I really like that. So you do have a large stack of locations. So these are all the locations that you're going to be able to visit while you're playing the game. And the locations have some nice art. Uh, it would have been cool. I'm kind of hoping for maybe an expansion that has a different, um, a different tile set. It would be cool to have some different locations because all of these kind of take place in like this forested area. So it would be neat to have like some caverns or maybe some a large interior or something like that. But you will have different locations. And each one of these buildings does have a paragraph that you read about and different choices you can make in the buildings, different characters you're going to meet. Uh, for instance, right here, I have the... Um, Wester's dirt hole and that's this like weird mysterious hole that you can kind of like jump in and appear in other places on the map but there are quite a few locations and the map can get pretty big while you're playing and then the next biggest deck you have are your character decks and these have all your enemies followers and heroes and once the players pick their hero they're actually you're actually going to shuffle in the other heroes into your character deck and they can become NPCs while you're playing. And that does actually create some pretty interesting uh, gameplay mechanisms when it comes to your quests. And that's really the object of the game is to complete a series of quests. You have heroic quests and side quests. And each one of these is gonna give you a certain number of quest points. And at the end of uh, 12 rounds, whoever has the most quest points wins the game. But as you can see here, so I have this one um, quest, it's find the cure. And I'm looking for a certain staff, a certain item that is going to be able to cure this plague. And that item here is the solar staff. And so I, in a solo game, what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to go through this character deck and find another hero. And once I find a hero, let's just find one real quick. So let's say I drew this guy and he was in my hand uh, the plant man, he's a hero. I would play him out onto the board. I would set up his uh, NPC area and then I would equip him with the solar staff. And I would have to go in and try to either convince him to give me the solar staff or defeat him in combat and take it and then take this solar staff to another location in order to beat that quest. And then it would give me a certain number of uh, victory points or quest points. And you also have these um, side quests, which are smaller, different ways you can get a f like one or two quest points per complete completing those. And then the largest deck we have here are items. And there are quite a few items ranging from health packs to swords to armor to bows, shields. The one thing it's kind of lacking is you can wear a piece of armor on your body and on your head but i believe there's actually only one helmet in this entire deck i'm not sure why helmets are super underrepresented underrepresented i can't say that word right now there aren't very many helmets in this game that's what i'm trying to say so i'm not sure why it would be cool to see more helmets maybe because everybody has such an oddly shaped head uh, <laughs> that this world just doesn't have a lot of helmets but uh hammer hammer of the burnlands that is super cool. The red solar cape. And like I said, this game, you know, won my, um, won the Dungeon Dive 2019 Best Art. 
and uh, you can see why this art is just fantastic so much just weird details and color and odd creatures nothing in this game is normal even the humans look weird and kind of grotesque everybody's just kind of uh, mutated and gnarly looking it is grotesque is the word that I would use to describe the art in Dark Venture. But right now in my hand, I have, yeah, I have a couple um, enemies that I can place out to fight and then a couple um, items. And I'm right now, like I said, I'm, I'm questing to find this hero so I can uh, get that staff so I can win that quest. But overall, I think this game is really good. It's unique. It doesn't, it, it, like thematically, it, it feels very different from any other type of game like this I've played. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is a slower paced game. You, combat is very deadly. People, you, enemies have, a, and your heroes have a ton of health. So like, you know, this uh, NPC here, he has 24 health. Uh, sometimes you're gonna be fighting enemies that have like 40 health. You can go up to 50 health on your character cards. And so combat can take a while. Uh, it's not fast paced. You do have to think about it. It can be super deadly. You can die pretty easily in this game. Um, the, the enemies all have special abilities that are dangerous. And so the world thematically is dangerous and me mechanically it is also very dangerous. And I like that. I like that. The, the, the feeling that this game conveys is is one of peril and that is one of the reasons why I think it is such a great game in addition to that the components the art the presentation is wonderful like I said it crams a ton of game into a small box I could see you look somebody looking at this game at a store and thinking it's just kind of like a little small card game um, but the box size definitely hides the fact that it is an epic adventure game. You get a ton of stuff. So this is everything in the base game. This is nothing with the expansion. I do not have the expansion uh, stuff mixed in because I wanted to experience the game uh, just with the base game for a while. But the expansion is called Vile Invaders. And this comes with a whole nother adventure book that has some different paragraphs you can read. And then it also has items or um, materials that you can collect in order to, um, in order to augment your, your gear, your weapons and, and your armor to make them better. But in addition, it also comes with some stronger enemies. So all in all, it's a very good expansion. It's a small box expansion that does add a lot to the game. Uh, let's see what else another thing so it does come with standees once again I love these standees and they have a, a, a number that will coincide with the um, the number of the enemy or the NPC that you are facing so if you've come across uh, like enemy or NPC number 20 you're going to want to uh, look at that card there and then we have his art there so lots of lots of different tokens there for the enemies. You can either use the standees and you can put them on little plastic bases, or you can use um, these little tokens that also represent the enemies. And then let's see, you also have uh, some tokens for your various uh, different health markers. You can upgrade your defenses with these tokens. You can upgrade your attack power. And yeah, it comes with a lot of great stuff. The character boards are nice. They have a, an inlay so you can put your uh, cubes in there and keep track of everything. And then also for NPCs, if you want a quick NPC, you can set up a health card and a uh, stat tracker like that. So I think w one of the problems with the game is the fact that everything is so small, including the instruction manual. And he wanted, I think Robert w really wanted to keep everything just like small and compact, but that is kind of a double-edged sword. I like that it doesn't take up a lot of shelf space, 
but the rule book really could have used some work. There is a 12 page PDF document on BGG that has errata and um, an FAQ. And a lot of that could have been alleviated if the instruction manual was just a little bigger. I mean, it's only like, it's only like 20 pages, very small, you know, not much bigger than a card, but I wish that maybe if this was the size of a mass market paperback and it still could have conveyed that kind of theme that he wanted, it actually would have been really cool if these were presented, if the guidebooks and the rule books were presented as old mass market paperbacks. That, that would have been a super cool conceptual design. But there are very few examples in the rule book and very few pictures, picture examples. Um, so it, it would have been nice to have a more robust rule book that came with the game that did answer some of the questions because this game can be fiddly. And because of the, the way that the NPCs and the enemies and the followers get set up and they're kind of like, you know, they're full-fledged characters. They're kind of autonomous. They, they will sometimes have their own desires and quests and that kind of thing. So you can get to the point where you do need to make some decisions about how something will play out kind of like an RPG but it's a board game so you know you really shouldn't have to do that it doesn't ever come to the point where something is like broken but there are enough edge cases in the game that you will need to check the rule book often and sometimes it's not, even though it's such a short rule book, it's kind of hard to find what you're looking for. And so that PDF that Robert is keeping up to date on BGG is something that I highly recommend people who are playing it at least read through and print it out in case they need it. But yeah, that is Dark Venture. All, you know, all told, I think this is a fantastic game. It's unique. It has an interesting world, interesting characters, story, theme, and some of the mechanisms I like. I can't really think of another game that's exactly like this one it feels different but if you like Dungeoneer if you want something that's a competitive adventure game definitely give this one a shot if you want to play it solo I do recommend checking out my uh, my solo rules because they just make the game a little faster in populating the world with more characters and locations so like I said at the beginning of this video Robert Lemon did provide me with a brand new copy of the expansion and the game. I'm going to be giving those away together as a package. Unfortunately, I, I will only ship to the continental United States because I'm going to be covering the postage. So to win the game, I just want somebody or if you want to enter, uh, post in the uh, comments that you are entering the competition for the game. And then just tell me why you want this game. And I will, the, the winner is gonna be chosen by me and I'm just gonna pick the answer that I like the best. So you can be creative, you can be thematic, you can be uh, factual. So just yeah, come up with a, a cool reason why you want a free copy of Dark Venture from the Dungeon Dive and from Robert Lemon at Gilded Skull Games. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.